So in this section, we are going to explore building and running bare metal executables for ARM target using GNU tools. So in this section, we are going to understand about the tool chains. We are going to understand compiling a C program for an embedded target without using any IDE and writing microcontroller startup file for HTM32F4 microcontroller. And you are going to write your own C startup code. That is the code which runs before main. And we are going to understand different sections of the relocatable object file, that is .o files. And in this section, we are going to learn writing linker script file from scratch and understanding the various section placements. And we are going to explore linking multiple .o files using linker script and generating application executables such as .elf, bin, Intel hex format, etc. And after that, finally, we are going to explore loading the final executable on the target using OpenOCD and GDB client. So all these things we are going to do without using any IDE. So everything we are going to write from scratch. We are going to write linker script from scratch, the startup file, and after that we are going to use command line tools to compile, link, and generate the binary, and after that transfer the binary from host to target machine by again using the command line tools uh, given by the OpenOCD and the GDB. Now, to do this exercise, we should first have a sample C program. So let's do one thing. Let's take one of the sample programs, what we wrote in the previous lectures. So I'm going to take some files from the project task scheduler. So this project we actually created in the earlier part of the course. Isn't it? So what you do is you just create one folder in your computer. Let's say my workspace and inside this uh, copy all these files from this project ld.c, ld.h, main.c and main.h. So go to the task scheduler project and copy ld.c, main.c and ld.h and main.h. So you should copy that into a folder called my workspace. So you should do this and after that I will show you how to compile these files using the cross compiler let's move forward so now we have our sample program that is .c files that is actually written using the high level language that is C so now our goal is to convert the high level language file into an executable so an executable is nothing but it's a collection of embedded target specific machine codes for that high level language program what you have written isn't it after that, this executable we are going to transfer into our uh, target board and we are going to run the program. For this, we have to do something called as cross compilation. So, what exactly is a cross compilation? Cross compilation is a process in which the cross tool chain runs on the host machine and creates executables that run on different machines. So, in our case, the host machine is our computer isn't it and the target machine is stm32 microcontroller based board and the microcontroller that is stm32 f4 is based on arm architecture isn't it so basically we have to create a machine instructions for arm architecture so now what exactly is a cross compilation tool chain so a tool chain or a cross compilation tool chain is a collection of binaries which allows you to compile assemble and link your application so it also contains binaries to debug the application on the target toolchain also comes with other binaries which will help you to analyze the executables like you can disassemble it you can dissect different sections of the executable you can extract symbol information size information you can convert the executable to other formats such as binary or intel hex format and the tool chain also provides you the C standard libraries, so which you will be using in your program. 
so now for ARM architecture, so we have got two popular tool chains. One is provided by the GNU, that is GCC for ARM embedded processors, which is completely free and open source. And ARM also provides its own tool chain, and that is called as ARM CC. So this actually ships with Kyle IDE, and the code restriction version is actually free. But if you want to remove that restriction, you should purchase the license. So that's why we'll not be using ARM CC in any of our courses. So we'll be using the open source one, that is the new tools. So throughout this course, we have been using uh, the GNU compiler collections toolchain, that is the GCC toolchain. And we will be using the GCC toolchain for this exercise as well. So next, how to download the GCC toolchain for ARM embedded processors. So if you have already installed stm 32 cube IDE, then this toolchain would have already installed as a part of installation. So because STM32 Cube IDE uses GCC toolchain. So that's why it would have already installed in your computer. Or you can download it from official website. So if you don't have this toolchain. So let's download the GCC toolchain for ARM embedded processors. So what you do is just search for GCC for ARM and follow this link developer.arm.com. And here go to this section and click on downloads. And here you can get the latest version. So since I'm using Windows machine, I would be using this one, win32.exe. If you are using Linux, then you can go for this. If you are using Mac, then you can go for this. Let me download this. Hey, welcome back. So I hope you downloaded this. So now let me install. Let's select English here and next. I agree and it will be installing in C drive under program files x86. That would be fine. Let's click install. So you can see that it is installing various libraries. So now it is completed. So now very important step. You have to check this add path to environment variable. So that is very important. So just check that and click on finish. So after that it launches the readme file where you can get the information about installing executables on Linux or if you are using Mac OS then you can refer this readme. Let me close this and you can close this as well. Then open your command prompt. So here what you should do is just type arm hyphen none hyphen eabi hyphen gcc press enter and this operation should detect the executable that is gcc here you can see that we are indeed able to run this command arm none eabi gcc which is nothing but our cross compiler and it says that there are no input files that's okay but you can see that the command prompt detected that command so that is very important let's go to the installation folder of the tool chain that is in program files x86 so here it is gnu tools for arm embedded and here let's go under bin and here you can see that all these are binaries which came with this toolchain installation. Here you can identify your cross compiler. So this is a cross compiler GCC right here. And this is assembler and uh, this is a linker. And these are the files which are used to analyze the ELF executable. And um, there are various other binaries which are included with this toolchain installation. So this is what we call as a toolchain or a cross toolchain. So all these executables will run on host machine. For example, the compiler. This is a compiler which runs on host machine, but it knows how to create the executables for the ARM architecture. So complete up to here 
and uh, make sure that you are able to execute this command so you can also give hyphen hyphen version here to know the version of that tool chain so now we installed the cross tool chain is it so and these are some of the important binaries which you must be aware of uh, the first one is arm non eabigcc this not only does compilation so this also does linking assembly so with this one command you can compile assemble and link your applications and if you want to invoke the linker explicitly then you can use this command arm non eabi ld and this is actually an assembler so assembler is nothing but it converts assembly level language file to machine codes so that's what we call as assembler after that you have got the elf file analyzers like object dump read elf nm etc and also there is something called as format converter like object copy which is used to convert a one executable format to another executable format so which we'll see practically as we make a progress in this lecture series so in the next lecture i'm going to cover build process and i'll see you in the next lecture let's understand the build process and we can later try this practically let's say you have main.c when you first invoke the compiler to compile your source file first stage is pre-processing stage in this stage all pre-processing directives of the source file will be resolved and the output file main.i is created for main.c main.i is created this is not compilation remember that this is a pre-processing stage of the compilation which is usually done by the compiler itself the pre-processing directives such as all hash includes the c macros or the conditional compilation macros of the source file will be resolved and a pre-processed file is created that has the extension of dot i after that what comes is the code generation stage that is translating a source file into assembly language that is if the input is main.i then output will be main.s here what happens is higher level language code statements will be converted into processor architecture level mnemonics higher level language in this case is c isn't it c statements will be converted into the assembly level language that's what we call as mnemonics after that comes the assembler stage all these things will be done by the compiler itself you need not to invoke any other commands everything will be done by the compiler in our case the compiler is arm non eabi gcc because we are doing the cross compilation in the assembler stage the assembly level mnemonics are converted into opcodes opcodes are nothing but machine codes for various instructions because at the end of the day the target or the processor understands numbers or machine codes that's why the assembler does this job of converting the assembly level mnemonics into the machine codes and it creates an output file called a relocatable object file if the input is main.s then output will be main.o that's what we call as relocatable object file i'll explain you what exactly i mean by relocatable so i will explain that later this is a whole process in our case we have got two source files isn't it main.c and ld.c which will undergo pre-processing and after that parsing where some checks will be carried out for the c syntax after that it goes into code generation unit of the compiler the output will be dot s file and in the assembler stage assembler converts the dot s file that is assembly level mnemonics into machine codes it generates the output file dot o dot o contains processor architecture specific machine codes with no absolute addresses that's the reason why it is called as relocatable the machine codes which are stored in dot o file 
they don't carry absolute addresses of the program memory they carry an address which can be relocatable we'll explore that later when we do this compilation practically this is a process of converting high level c code to machine codes remember that so you can't see all these .i and .s files unless you instruct the compiler to save those files we can do that but by default, compiler doesn't save .i and .s files, which are created in between the process. After that comes the linking stage. All the relocatable object files will be taken up by the linker. It will resolve all the symbols and other information, and it will merge the different sections of the .o files to create one executable. That is the final executable and the format of that executable will be .elf. .elf stands for executable and linkable format. All relocatable object files are merged together to create one executable. After that, you can take that executable which is in ELF format to create some other format such as binary format which has the extension of .bin or you can convert that ELF file into Intel hex format using the tool object copy. This is a complete uh, build process. In summary, the first comes the pre-processing followed by compilation followed by linking. And all these steps will be carried out by using only one binary that is ARM none EABI GCC only one command you have to run which does all these steps you need not to explicitly invoke uh, assembler or linker like that so you need not to do that you can just use one command in the next lecture let's run this command to cross compile our dot c files let's execute some commands to compile our source file now head over to the folder that is our workspace under which we have uh, kept our source files isn't it we have got ld.c ld.h main.c and main.h main.c and ld.c are our source files first let's compile main.c for that we have to invoke the cross compiler the cross compiler is arm none eabi gcc then let's give the input file that is main.c after that let's mention the output file by using the compiler argument hyphen o which instructs the compiler to generate an output file let's give the output file name main.o this command what it does is it takes the input file main.c and creates the relocatable object file but the default behavior of this command is to compile assemble and link but we don't want to link we just want to compile so we just want to compile main.c and we want to generate the relocatable object file if your goal is just to compile then you have to instruct the compiler explicitly that we do by mentioning another compiler argument you can give that compiler argument before you mention the input files I mean it's not mandatory but you can do that it's better to give the compiler arguments before mentioning the input source files I would give the compiler argument hyphen C. This instructs the compiler to just compile and assemble and not to link. All these compiler arguments you can explore by going through the documentation that is using a new compiler collection documentation. The link to this online documentation I have given in the resource section you can just explore 
here just click on options controlling the kind of output if you browse this document you will get uh, hyphen c compile or assemble the source file but do not link the linking stage simply is not done the ultimate output is in the form of an object file for each source file by default the object file name for a source file is made by replacing the suffix .c .i or .s with .o let's go back and hit enter so the compilation didn't go well there is a problem with the assembler now let's analyze this error what's the goal of this command the goal of this command is to generate main.o file that is relocatable object code which is nothing but collection of machine codes the main.c will go through all these phases. When it reached assembler, there was a problem. The assembler couldn't able to generate a machine level instruction. So these codes are there in our source file, isn't it? In the form of inline assembly code. The error says that the compiler couldn't able to understand those inline assembly codes. That's because in this command, we have not informed the compiler about our processor architecture that is very important because this cross compiler can generate instructions for various processor architectures like cortex m4 cortex m0 arm 9 arm 7 for various processor architectures you can use this compiler in our case the processor is arm cortex m4 and uh, either you have to tell the processor name or you have to mention the processor architecture that we can do by using uh, some more compiler options or arguments let's go back to our documentation and now let's explore about machine dependent options here you can see that gcc supports all these machine options and we should be looking at arm options here just search for machine architecture it supports various architectures but the default one i'm not sure if you don't supply this argument i don't know what it takes by default that's why it's very important that you know you should initialize this argument to arm v7 which is true in our case our arm cortex m4 processor is designed based on arm v7 architecture if you are not sure about the architecture then don't worry go to another option here that is called as mcpu here it is mcpu this option you can mention the arguments for this option is same as m2 you can pick one option among these uh, various options you can see that it has cortex a76 Cortex M0, if you are using Cortex M0 Plus, then you should be using this Cortex M1, M3, M4. Let's say what it says. This specifies the name of the target ARM processor. GCC uses this name to derive the name of the target ARM architecture and the ARM processor type for which to tune for performance. Let's use this option M. CPU. Let me go back. Clear this. Let me mention here hyphen M CPU is equal to Cortex hyphen M4. This mentions the target processor. After that, so one more compiler argument you have to use that is M thumb. There are two options M thumb and MR. In our case, we have to use M thumb. If you don't use this, then M arm will be considered by default. What this does? This helps the compiler to make a selection between generating code that executes in arm and thumb states. Remember that the Cortex M processors, they support only thumb state. That means they execute those instructions which are there in thumb instruction set architecture if you make a thumb processor 
to execute ARM instruction, then there will be an exception. There are some processors which support both ARM and thumb state. You can switch between ARM and thumb state, but that is not possible in ARM Cortex MX processors because these processors support only one state that is thumb instruction state. That's the reason you should use this option. Otherwise, DCC will include instructions from ARM instruction set architecture, which our processor will not be able to execute. That's why you can see here the default for most configurations is to generate code that executes in ARM state. So we have to override this. That's the reason we should use M thumb here. Let's go back and give M thumb. This much is sufficient for a time being. Later we can explore some more compiler arguments. Let's hit enter. The compilation went well and here you can see that the main dot O is created. This is just a compilation. There is no linking. As I said, we have stopped linking by using hyphen C. If you just want to create assembly file, that means if you want to stop compilation at this stage, instead of hyphen C, you can use hyphen capital S. Let's explore that. So here it is. Stop after the stage of compilation proper. Do not assemble. The output is in the form of an assembler code file for each non-assembler input file. What you have to do is you have to give output file name as main.s and hit enter. This command generated assembly file for the .c file. That's it. Here it is main.s. Let's explore this file. You can open in a notepad, no problem. And here you can see that this is a assembly level mnemonics which are generated for our .c file. These are the thumb instructions which are generated by the compiler. So you just learned how to invoke the cross compiler with few arguments to create the object file for your .c file. In the next lecture, let's see how to write a make file and uh, automate this process because every time, you know, invoking the compiler and mentioning the arguments, mentioning input files, output files, it would be a tedious process. That's why it would be good if we create a make file and automate the build. I will teach you that in the next video.